He's got a dead coat. He, he's got a problem either up and down with his weight. He's itching. He's licking his paws. He's scratching. He may have a wheat allergy. The second thing is corn. Corn and wheat. Not only are corn and wheat not things your dog would normally eat, but corn is indigestible even in humans. Anybody uh, go to a barbecue and you had corn on the cob? You know what I'm talking about? The next day you know you had corn. So it's not digestible. What is digestible of the corn is the oil. Well, the oil burns very hot. My horses in the winter, when I have an older horse, I put them on corn oil so that their body burns hot and they stay warm. Your dog is not a horse. Horses eat grains, fruits and vegetables, grasses. Wild dogs do not graze in corn and wheat fields. They may chase the rabbit that goes through the corn and wheat field. And I guarantee almost all your, all your dog's food is going to have corn and wheat. Now, if you have a normal dog, he's healthy, he's doing great, no scratching, no itching, no aggression, best dog of your life, I don't care if you put him on corn. But nobody comes to Mark and me and says, I got the best dog in the world. People call us, my dog bit my, my like I just got a woman last week, my dog, my Cocker Spaniel bit my son in the face, 14 stitches. Uh, my dog uh, bit the baby. My dog is out of control. My dog is hyper. My dog doesn't listen. So everybody who calls us has a dog with a behavioral issue. Guess what? If your dog has behavioral issues, you need to fo focus also on the food. So even Royal Canin, even Seinstein, go through the list. I'm not going to badmouth anybody. I'm just educating you. You guys go and you look it up and you see what's in your dog food. The next one is soy. Soy causes gas. Now, with a little dog, it makes them gassy, and, you know, you blame your husband for it. But in reality, if you have a big dog, like a Boxer, a Doberman, a Ridgeback, a, any of the bigger dogs, when they get a buildup of gas and they get a little pain, they lie down, they can roll over, they can change position, their body twists, and their stomach, it's called gastric torsion, T-O-R-S-I-O-N. The vet's food that you're talking about, teen, is probably also got corn wheat in it. I guarantee it's got corn in it. The vet's nutritional counseling and nutritional education at vet school is paid for by Hills Science Diet. I'm sorry if anybody's from Hills. I'm a behaviorist. Corn and wheat are things I avoid. Gastric torsion is called bloat. And a lot of people know that word. You can avoid bloat now. The way you avoid bloat is by raising your dog's water and food. The food, just raise it a bit. Raise it so he's got his head out and then just down. Not up high, not low. Just out and down. A little bit. So a large dog, maybe raise it 12 inches. Smaller dog, don't worry about it. Um, so that's why we avoid corn, wheat, and soy. Very important. Now, here's another thing. Gluten's very good. Gluten's um, are the most allergic part of the food. The autistic kids that I work with, guess what the two things that their, their parents avoid? Anything with weed in it and any gluten. Well, guess what? Autism is a behavioral thing. Autism is a, is a neurological or an emotional. What are we dealing with? Dogs with emotional behavioral issues. So if, it tells me that if doctors are telling parents not to let their kids have things with wheat and, and glutens in them, well, you know what? Makes sense with dogs, too. So the next things that we're going to avoid are BHA and BHT. Now, BHA and BHT are chemical preservatives that are carcinogens. They cause cancer. They're tumorigenic. They cause tumors. And the third thing is, and you can go on chemistry, you know, the chemistry.com uh, kind of uh, websites, check it out. BHA, BHT also cause behavioral changes. People calling me up are not calling with dogs that are angels. They're calling me with dogs with behavioral issues. So guess what? Get rid of BHA and BHT. There's something else called propylene glycol. I'll spell that out for you. Propylene glycol is a component of antifreeze. If it's an antifreeze, it makes it sweet. Why is your dog eating that? Remember, it's poisonous. The final and most disgusting thing is called, you're going to love this, byproducts. 
Now, we're going to avoid byproducts, but there's a couple of reasons. A byproduct of a chicken is what? Anything, think about a rotisserie chicken you get at the store. Whatever they took off of that chicken is what goes into your dog's food. So, what goes into that food? The feathers, the beaks, the butts, the brains, the kidneys, the livers, the intestines, the guts, the feathers. I mean, anything, could, yep, feathers can go in. Legally, any part of the animal can go in as a byproduct. Now, if it said new food made with fresh chicken brains and it had a picture of your dog on it, would you buy it? But they don't tell you that. That's why the ingredient panels are so tiny and it's so hard to read. They don't want you to know what's in it. Now, when you get foods, at least a chicken byproduct, we know it's from a chicken. What is an animal byproduct? If that doesn't gross you out. They did a study um, last year after the China melamine scare. And they tested some of the, the bigger brands of dog food. Some of them in stores, some of them in the, you know, Costco warehouse type places. And guess what they found? They tested this and they found chemicals that are in, uh, well, basically chemicals that are used to tranquilize and euthanize animals. Now, why would a company who's trying to make money, yeah, it gets, it gets grosser. Why would that company add that, pay money to add those chemicals to a dog food? They didn't add it to the dog food. It came in the form of the euthanized cow, the euthanized goat, the euthanized horse. And even, it can be, remember it's an animal, euthanized cat, dog, mouse, chipmunk, whatever you want. Legally, they can put anything into your dog food if they label it as an animal byproduct. It can be a squirrel. I mean, literally, I don't know what they put in, but you know what, the food I use, it's organic chicken, it's organic blueberries, organic rice, organic everything. That's what I want for my dog. So read your labels, okay? Now, your dog shouldn't be vegetarian because I want my dogs to eat the rotisserie chicken, the parts I eat. But your dog cannot be a vegetarian because dogs are carnivores. They're actually omnivores. Dogs will not eat wheat and corn, but you know what they will eat? They'll eat vegetables, they'll eat berries, they'll eat fruits. So you've got to get your dog off of, oh, don't even, don't name me brands, because if you buy it in a supermarket, it's no good. Just assume if it's in a supermarket and you see um, advertising on it, forget it. They've spent money on the advertising instead of what goes in the bag. There are several good foods out there. Um, if you email me, I don't want to promote anything, but I use an all-organic food. You can email me. I'll tell you where what I get and where to get it. The other thing that you guys should do, by the way, cucumber is very gassy. Watch out for cucumbers. Carrots are great. Here are more things to avoid. Mushrooms are not great for dogs. Grapes, raisins, I'm sure some of you guys know that, macadamia nuts, which can cause temporary paralysis, 